How do you know when you're supposed to use a one-tail test or a two-tail test? Let's say when you're solving problems associated with hypothesis testing. How do you know? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about that. So let's say that a company manufactures potato chips and that the average mass of each potato chip bag is 100 grams. So that is going to be the null hypothesis, where the mean mu is 100 grams. Now, let's say that an employee believes this answer to be different. He believes that the mean is not 100 grams. So this is going to be the alternative hypothesis. Now, whenever you have the situation, whenever the alternative hypothesis doesn't equal some value, you're going to have a two-tailed test. So let's draw a picture of that. So we have a normal distribution, and we're going to shade the area on the left and on the right. So this is a two-tailed test. The shaded area represents the rejection region. The area that is not shaded is the fail to reject region. Now the Z values that separate these two regions, the rejection region and the fail to reject region, those Z values are known as critical values. Now let's say that the employee conducts the test at a 95% confidence level. C is going to be 0.95. C is equal to one minus alpha. So that's the confidence level. Alpha is going to be the significance level. C plus alpha is one. So one minus 0.95, that's 0 0.05, that's alpha. This is known as the significance level. So because alpha is split into two regions, the right side is going to be alpha over 2, and the left side is alpha over 2, each with an area of 0 0.025. The area in the middle is 0.95. Now, in order to determine whether you should reject or not reject the null hypothesis, you need to calculate the z value and compare it to the critical value. So this other z value, let's call it zc, this is going to be the calculated z value, which is associated with this, the test statistic. If that z value is greater than the critical value, then you should reject the null hypothesis because it's in the rejection region. If the z value, let's say, by the way, this is the mean. Let's say if the z value is not in a shaded region, then you should not reject the null hypothesis. You should keep it. Now I'm going to talk about how to get those Z values in another video. But for now, let's talk about the other one tell tests. There's two of them. So the first one would be a left tell test. And the second one is a right tail test. Both of these are one-tailed tests. Now, at a 95% confidence level, alpha will still be 0 0.05. So for the left tail test, alpha is going to be completely on the left side. Now, this is when you're supposed to use an, a left tail test. Let's say that the alternative hypothesis is that the mean is less than 100. So if it's less than some number, you need to use the left tail test. Now let's say for the alternative hypothesis that the mean is greater than some number. In that case, then you would use the right tail test. So that's how you can tell whether you have a one tail test or a two tail test you need to look at what statement is made by the alternative hypothesis. 
if it doesn't equal a number, then your calculated Z values can be on the left side or on the right side. So you need to use a two tell test. If you believe that the mean is less than a number, then your calculated Z value is going to be somewhere on the left side of the mean. So you need to use a left tell test. If you believe the mean is greater than 100, then likely your calculated Z value is going to be on the right side of the mean. So you need to use a right tell test. So that's how you know which type of test you need to use. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.